Hi guys, here's your lesson on the first day of Law of Sines. Law of Sines allows us to solve for triangles that are not right triangles. Because usually for right triangles you can just use um, sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. But if you do have a triangle that is not a right triangle, Law of Sines is one method that you can solve the triangle. So Law of Sines, you have um, your sides over here and your angle measurements. The formula for Law of Sines is sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. So it's just the ratios of sine of the angles with its corresponding sides. And of course you're not going to use all three ratios at once. Um, you're mostly going to just use two at a time. Okay, so you have sine A over A, sine B over B, and sine C over C. So for this first example, I'm, I have angle A being 15 degrees, angle B being 50, and side B being 36. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch out a triangle, a very generic triangle. So I have A, B, C, side A, side B, side C. And I know that angle A is 15 degrees. Obviously my triangle is not drawn to scale. I know angle B is 50 degrees. I also know that side B is 36. So the key with law of sines is having an angle and its corresponding side. So I have angle B and side B, so I can use that to set up my first ratio. So I have sine of 50 degrees over side B, which was 36. And the other angle measurement that I have is A, which is 15, so I'm going to go ahead and use that to solve for side A. Okay, we have ratios, so we can go ahead and cross multiply. And then that gives me A sine of 50 equals 36 sine of 15. And I'm trying to get A by itself, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by sine of 50 degrees. I'm going to take this and plug it into my calculator, 36 sine of 15 divided by sine of 50, and that gives me 12.2, 12.2, rounding the sides to the nearest tenth and then the angles to the nearest degree. Okay, so we still know B and B, so I'm going to use that same ratio, sine of 50 degrees over 36. And the other angle inside that we don't know yet is C and angle C. Well, if I know that these two angles are 15 degrees and 50 degrees, I can solve for angle C pretty easily by taking 180 degrees minus 15 degrees minus 50 degrees. So angle C is 115 degrees. And now that I know that this is 115, I can set up my next ratio. So I have angle C, so I have sine of 115 divided by side C, which is what we're missing. Again, I can go ahead and cross multiply. And that gives me C sine of 50 equals 36 sine of 115, dividing both sides by sine of 50 degrees, I'm going to take this and plug it into my calculator, so I have 36 sine of 115 divided by sine of 50, and that gives me 42.6. So now your triangle is solved because you have all three sides and we also have all three angles. For this next example, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out my generic triangle again. I know angle B is 42 degrees. I know that C is 68 degrees. And I know that side A is 10. Okay, so for the law of sines, you need an angle and its corresponding side. Well, this is the only side that we have, which means we need its corresponding angle. 
So we need to figure out what angle A is. Well, since I know these two, I can go ahead and take 180 minus 68 degrees minus 42 degrees. So 180 minus 68 minus 42 is 70 degrees. And now that I know that angle A is 70 degrees, I have an angle and its corresponding side, I can set up the law of sines. And I'm going to just go in alphabetical order and solve for side B. So I'm going to have sine of angle B, which is 42 degrees, divided by side B. And again, you're cross-multiplying, getting B by itself. So I have B sine of 70 equals 10 sine of 42 getting B by itself, so I'm dividing both sides by sine of 70 degrees. Gonna take that, plug it into my calculator, and that gives me 7.1. And then I need to solve for side C as well. I'm gonna use the same ratio with A and A. So I have sine of 70 degrees again over 10, equals sine of 68 degrees over C, cross multiplying, and I get C sine of 70 degrees equals 10 sine of 68. Divide both sides by 70. You get C equals 10 sine of 68 divided by sine of 70 is 9.9. .9. And the triangle is solved. All three sides, all three angles. Last problem. One side of a triangular path is four miles long. The angle opposite this side is 64 degrees. Another angle formed by the triangular path measures 66 degrees. What is the perimeter of the path? So we have a triangular cycling path. Um, one side is four miles. The angle opposite this side is 64 degrees. And another angle formed by the triangle is 66 degrees. And we want to find the perimeter, which means we want to add all three sides together. So we still need to find this side, which I'm going to go ahead and label as X, and that side, which I'm going to go ahead and label as Y. Now this angle measurement, we can figure out by taking 180 minus 66 minus 64. So this angle measurement is 50 degrees. Now I have an angle on its corresponding side, which means I can use the law of sines. So I have sine of 64 over four equals, I'm gonna go ahead and solve for x first, sine of 50 degrees over x, cross multiply and solve, and you get x equals four sine of 50 divided by sine of 64. I skipped some steps, by the way. So 4 sine of 50 divided by sine of 64 is 3.4 miles. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve for this side of the cycling path. Still going to use the sine of 64 over 4, except now I'm going to use sine of 66 over y cross multiply and solve and you get y equals 4 sine of 66 over sine of 64 and that gives me about 4.1 miles and again we wanted to know the perimeter So the perimeter is going to be all three sides added together. So four miles plus 3.4 miles plus 4.1 miles equals 11.5 miles. So the perimeter of a path is 11.5 miles. All right, so that does it for the first day of Law of Signs.